Hello, thank you for joining me. Today is part three of our walk along the River Misbourne. Yesterday, I walked from Great Missingdon to Amersham. I went to Amersham this morning. I came along the footpath along the valley to here, to Bottom House Farm Lane, where I thought we'd start part three. So the main Amersham road, the A413, is just up there. Here's the River Misbourne. The footpath runs just along there, and then there's carries on across the road. So what I'm going to do this morning is walk all the way down the valley towards Chalfont St Giles and on to Chalfont St Peter. So let's go and discover more of the River Misbourne. So I've now just come about a mile from Bottom House Farm Lane. See where that yellow post is? Came out the footpath along there. It's a very pleasant walk along the valley, but it wasn't actually by the river. The river was always a field or so away. I will be carrying on down there to Chalfont St Charles Village Centre, about a quarter of a mile away now from the village centre. What I wanted to show you is firstly this building here. This is the old mill. This is Mill Lane in Chalfont St Giles. So that way takes you up to the main A413. That way takes you to other parts of the village. And come around here, there is a Ford, which this car is just, a Ford has just driven through the Ford. Um, and it's quite funny what happens here because as you can see there's a, a hump in the road but every time a car comes through it forces a load of water over the hump so then you get a bit of a river going down here and there's actually you can't really see a lot of it but there's another course of the river flowing directly under us here you, all you can really see is um, a brick wall there is water in it and you can see the water that gets pushed over the bit of the hump from cars goes down there and into the second course but let's go and have a look at the Ford preferably while there's no cars about because it's going to be a little bit challenging getting across because every time a car comes along this whole area effectively becomes the river but while there's no one about I can walk on this without um, getting my feet wet so I'm just going to have to wait here some runners coming over the bridge if a car comes now well they'll have to wait a moment so we're now going to go over the bridge this way. It is a bit of a trying to sort of, you've got to walk and not get your feet wet um, exercise. But here's the Ford, possibly, as far as I'm aware, I think this is the only public Ford on the River Misborn. There might be one or two on private roads and on farm tracks, but I think this is the only one. Well, as we go along, I'll, I'll probably answer my own question. So yeah, then the river trickles off down there towards Chalfont St Giles, which as I said, is about a quarter of a mile that way. I'm now gonna go back across the ford, or across the bridge beside the ford rather, and continue down the footpath towards Chaffles and Giles village centre. So I've walked along the footpath from Mill Lane, and now we are coming to the village centre of Chaffles and Giles. This is probably one of Buckinghamshire's most attractive villages. It really is a very beautiful little village. Um, the river flows over there. We're going to have a look at that in a minute, but I'm just going to let you see the village centre. Now, if you look here, this view you see looking up there, that is where they filmed the 1971 film Dad's Army. So that was Warmington on Sea. And this building here, what is now a Costa Coffee, was Captain Mannering's bank. It was more recently it was a pub so i've been in there i've had a beer in there i've also had a coffee in there last year never withdrawn money from there and i probably never will what i'm going to do now i'm going to head away from the river misborn because there's something else just up there i'd like to show you so i'm just walking up the hill now a little away from the village center and this is what i wanted to show you here this little cottage, this one on the end. This is Milton's cottage. This was the home of the poet, John Milton. You can go and visit it, it's not open today, but you go in, you can have a look around, hear about John Milton's life. And you can also have a look around the quite attractive cottage garden. So if you're in Chalmers and Charles, you can go for a nice walk in the Mismore Valley and um, come and visit Milton's cottage. I'm gonna go back that way now, down to the village centre, and we're gonna reunite with the River Misborn. So I've come back down to Chalmers and Giles Village Green and just beside me here is the village pond which is connected to the River Misbourne. So what we're going to do now is we're going to walk around the pond 
We'll rejoin the River Misborn and we shall follow it all the way through to Chalmers and Peter and on to Denham. So let you see one last view of the beautiful village green of Chalmers and Giles. And just behind us here is River Misborn. So this is really quite a nice little area just outside the village centre where the river flows. This all becomes meadows beyond here and it's like this kind of all the way to Chalfon St Peter really so I'm going to follow the river and um, we'll keep going. Well now it effectively it runs behind the village so you see the road there up that way goes up to where the A413 is so the A413 which other side there's trees up there there's it's not quite connected at the moment but see the pond and the river a couple of weeks ago when the river was higher the water was flowing right across so it shows over the last few weeks with the hot weather the river level has gone down and like I said in part one and two, being a chalk stream, it is a natural thing that the river levels, well, on most rivers, the river level goes up and down, but even more so with this one being a chalk stream and it can um, it cause the river to dry up in the summer. And um, it sometimes stays dried up all through the winter and, um, you know, on into the next year. So, but it's really nice to see it's flowing now. We are still running parallel, there's quite a lot of trees and bushes, so um, I appreciate you can't see it. We shall though, just up here in a minute, we um, will be behind the parish church. So this section is quite nice, look, we come onto a boardwalk. So when the flow is even, is higher, it, this area sometimes floods, that's why they've put a boardwalk along here. So um, yeah, that, that always think a boardwalk makes the walk a bit more interesting. So we're just going to carry on along here and uh, you can see the parish church is, well, you will see it, I promise. Where are we? There we are, there's the parish church of Chaffield St Giles. That's another really pleasant church to visit. So, you know, if you are here out for a walk, I do suggest, um, you know, go and visit the parish church, have a look around the village. It's all really worth seeing. We come up to here, we effectively go back onto a boardwalk again and um, here's the river right here and then so you can see the river that's where we've just come along there's a footpath here which would take us beside the churchyard that goes back towards the village center what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go back across the river this way and we're going to carry on along towards chalfont st peter so um, i'm going to follow this path up here in a moment there's a path that goes in that direction and that'll take me the next couple of miles on towards Chaffin St Peter so I'll show you more a little bit further up the river. Well, I've now left Chaffin St Giles behind me and I'm now going to follow the river through the fields towards Chaffin St Peter. So here we have the river here and you can see it's back to really being a small stream again like it was up at Great Missingdon. It seems between sort of Great Missingdon and Amersham becomes a bit of a bigger river but now it's really gone back to being this small river and there's a rather interesting thing here and I don't really know much about it but if you look there's a ditch going off here which later on rejoins the river Misborn. Now it's, it's got it's got a bit of water in it but not much. A few weeks ago it was you know had wouldn't say it was full but it had more water in. To me it looks like someone's built this man-made ditch there must be a pipe under here and I really don't know why, because the natural course of the river meanders all around these fields, but this seems to be a more straighter course, straight up there and along, almost parallel to the road. And as I shall show you later on, it does rejoin the main course. So if anyone knows why that other course was put in, please do comment and tell me, because, you know, as we've already discovered, the river has been diverted. It was diverted at Amersham, and there's rumours that that's linked to why it sometimes dries up when they built the Amersham Bypass, they diverted. But if you look at the natural course, see how it meanders all around these fields. So what I'm gonna keep doing now is I'm gonna follow it all the way to Chalfont St. Peter, and um, well, we're just gonna keep going, but I'm gonna find a point where the ditch that they seem to have dug and the natural course reunites. So I'm gonna keep going that way to Chalfont St. Peter. 
I've just come a little way from where we were a moment ago. I just wanted to show you this. This is a spring or was a spring a few weeks ago. When I last came down here, there was water flowing down here and into the river. So it appears that perhaps as the water table has less water in, the weather warms up, there's less water to feed the Mizborn. Now, it, as I've just said, it really is, the flow is a lot lower than it was the other side of Amersham. So I'm wondering, does the water effectively kind of just sort of seep into the ground or evaporate as we go along here whatever's happening there's less and less water as we go along which isn't sort of what most rivers do most rivers you know get bigger as they go along but it has always been like this from what i remember the Mizbourne, as i said it rises and falls but it just does seem to be there's more water the other side of amersham now if we get to here there is another footpath along there and um, this seems to be a permissive path. Someone has made this rather unofficial looking bridge, which um, is gonna take us across. There's quite a lot of water here, but that's because it opens out into quite a flat plain. So yeah, this is how, it's either that or walk through the river. I haven't got wellies on today. So oh, it's a bouncy old bridge. Can I do this on camera? Yes, I can. Right, there we go, <laughs> across it. So this is the main path now from Charles and Giles, Charles and Peter. There is another path though that goes across there. So my plan is to find that because we still need to find where the other man-made course, which runs along the length of those trees, joins the main course. So I'm gonna carry on now in that direction. I'm now a bit closer to Charles and Peter. Well, probably about halfway actually at the moment between Chelsea Pete and Chelsea and Giles. I had to go back on myself to get across the whole river. Um, and the trench that I showed you had been dug. Well, here is where the two join. So over there, that's the main river and this is the trench. There's a bit of water in it here, but I'm not sure. Well, it is flowing out of there. So there obviously is water coming along there, but this is where the two reunite. And then the river flows off up there. Interestingly, over there, there's another spring-like pond. There's a few of these, but that one appears to be not connected to the river at all. But what I think all this, this all becomes marshlands if um, you know, you've know got prolonged periods of a lot of rain. So whilst you can quite easily walk along there, it's a bit squelchy under feet. I think if you came here in the winter when there'd been a lot of rain, it would be almost impossible unless you had wellies. I'm now gonna follow the path along here. It crosses the river up there and um, we'll keep going until we get to Charles and Peter. Well, we're now getting closer and closer towards Charles and Peter. I was going along the main footpath, which is just along there behind that hedge. The A413 is over here. There's this footpath that runs to the A413. You can already see the, be the beginnings of Charles and Peter. Now, as for the river, well, something's happened. Look, here we come to this bridge, which when I was doing my Charles and Peter video, we featured this bridge, although I came from that end. It's dried up now, it wasn't then. So what I'll do, I'll insert a bit of footage from that video now. So here we are in the Midsbourne Valley proper. Here's the river itself. There's a rather um, rickety old two plank bridge over the river. It's getting a bit muddy, um, but not enough to stop me from enjoying the walk. So here we are, here's the river Midsbourne. Like I said, we are in the future. I'm gonna do a video. Of, my intention is to walk all the way from Great Missingdon that way right down to Denham that way at some point in the future. I've already done one on the free tributaries in Chalfont St Peter so have a look out for that video. Put a link in now. Look at this bridge, look how rickety it is. I'm not even sure if I should walk on that left flank, it might break. And then this one is full of water. Um, so yeah, here we are. Well, it's, it's, it's all right to walk on. Um, do I put my foot? So, I mean, it's, it's a bit bouncy, but no, it is safe. So I'm gonna carry on over to the stile and along the river and the next part of the video we should be closer to the village centre again. And as you can see it was flowing then so let's what we'll do we'll walk over the rickety bridge in this direction this time and then um, I still want to carry on in that direction so just because I can I'm going to walk through the river I'd rather be doing this with water in and wearing wellies so I'm going to walk through the river and um, I'm going to carry on back up there towards the main path and soon we should be in Chaffles and Peter. 
So I've now just come a little bit further along the path which runs between Chalfont St Peter and Chalfont St Charles. Now, as we saw about there, the river was dried up. But if you look here, thankfully, it's short lived because you can see a pool of water down there. And if you look just here through the hedge, you can just see some water. So there's springs here. So those springs are beginning to fill the river again and it flows off in that direction. The main dried up course is over there, but this spring effectively has become a second source. So we have a river that now flows on towards the River Colne. It's the river though, sort of from, well, from Great Missingdon through Amersham to Amersham St Giles. It's weird how that just disappears. I was going to try and find a spot where it actually disappears, but I couldn't because it was private land between there and where it was dried up. But at the last point I could access it, there was water, but very low flow. So it's strange really how it just sort of disappears into the ground. But like I said, only a few weeks ago, it was flowing all the way through. And well, with all this hot weather, it's nice to have the hot weather, but it does make me wonder if in a few weeks time, more of the river could dry up, but I'd like to think that isn't the case. What I might do, I'm not saying I definitely will, but I could potentially do a follow-up video and we could see um, what if there is any progress. If you look just there, there you are, we can see that tributary which flows off and up there joins the main course. I'm now going to continue on towards Champs of Peter in the next one. We shall be in Champs of Peter itself. Well, we've now reached Mill Meadow. Now, if you think this looks familiar, if you watch my videos where I explored all the plaques of Chaffin St. Peter, then that's because we came to exactly this spot. The reason I came here then was because I was showing you there's a plaque just here. Now, this one is relevant to the River Misborn. It tells you about a swimming pool that used to be here. So you can see the plaque there. Um, have a look at the Chaffin St. Peter video. I'll show you, tell you all about them in those videos. But there was a swimming pool which was only had water in when the Misbourne fl was flowing. Now, if we go over this bridge here, this is the main course. You can see we're back to a nice river, you know, with, with a lot of water in. So the tributary we saw back there effectively saved the river and brought water back into the river. And um, as far as I'm aware, like I said, it flows all the way through. It's just a shame it can only be half a mile, a quarter of a mile section where there isn't water in the river at the moment which is fairly good because i've known it be you know there not be water since um this side of of chalfont park which we'll get to in the next video so it's great to see there is that much water in it but it just seems a bit of a shame there's that little bit with no water in it so that's mill meadow over there i'm going to continue this way and we'll have a look at the river in chalfont of peter village center and that's where we shall end this one and in the next video we'll carry on towards through chalfont park and on towards denham So here we are, we're almost at Chalfont St Peter Village Centre. Building over there, that's the community centre. There's a rather interesting board just here. Now, this shows you some walks you can do. I've got a leaflet of those walks and they are really worth doing. But the other thing it tells you, I'm gonna put an insert in now, is about how and why the river does dry up part of the way along. The section we looked at, it's not fed from any springs so it just all seeps into the water it's relying on the strings further up but now we've come past that section and there's a few more springs and that's why we have water in the river through Chalfont St Peter so I'm going to continue along this path along here you can see the river is just down there we've got the community center to us, to us beside us over there there's the river so what my plan is now is to take you all the way into Chalfont St Peter Village Centre where the river quite literally disappears. It doesn't dry up, it disappears. Um, you'll see more of which in a moment and then in part four you'll be able to find out where it reappears. So I'm just going to keep going along this way. There's a big park over there behind the community centre. That's where if you saw the earlier video I made, the tributaries of the Misborn, that flows, that tributary flows along there. In fact we'll actually see where it it joins so if you have a look at that video and um, you'll be able to see where those tributaries you know start and end so th there's three in Chalfont St Peter so before doing this I did a video on those three tributaries there's these pollarded willow trees 
along this section of the river. There's quite an interesting bit coming up though that I particularly wanted to show you. I'm just coming up towards the Greyhound pub. Now there's this bridge here. There's also one of the plaques because there was a mill here once with a weir. So have a look at that. Again, if you watch the Chalfons and Peace video, you'll see that. See this bridge here though? This is fairly modern. It's called the Vic Wooten Bridge. And I'll show you, there's a plaque about Vic Wooten. So he was someone who helped with the rescuing of the River Misborn when it seemed like it was going to be dried up forever. But what I remember is the bridge before this one was a lot lower. It must have been built because the flow was always so low and water used to flow over the top of it, which I always used to find really amusing. And I remember in a child, I used to love paddling through it in my wellies. Now, looking into the Greyhounds pub garden, the river used to go straight along there. When it flooded, it went from dried up to flooded in about 2001, I think it was, or 2002. There was literally water everywhere around here and they diverted to make it a straighter course and it hasn't flooded since. But I remember when it did flood, the whole or most of the village car park was underwater. It was really, um, you know, quite, quite an interesting thing. It wasn't very nice for the people whose houses were flooded, but you just couldn't believe that it could go from one extreme being dried up to flooding. And I think it might be something to do with when they later on were trying to rescue the river, somehow there ended up being too much water, but it also helped the fact there was a lot of rain. So effectively all, or at least half the car park was underwater. It really was um, a very strange sight seeing, as I said, go from one extreme to another. So this is the new course of the river. The older course was just the other side of that grass and then came round here and joined. Now, I said about the tributary of the River Misborn, which is culverted under the car park in the other video, where you can just see the water coming out below that tree and joining the main course and we're now heading into the village centre, through the weeping willows, into the village centre. Got the parish church just behind those trees there. So there's the parish church. So do have a look at my Chalfons and Peter series. You'll be able to hear a lot more about the village in that. Now, when I said the river disappears, this is what I mean. It's culverted under St Peter's Court, the 1960s shopping development. Now, if you want to know where that culvert ends, you'll have to watch the next video. And in that video, we're going to go finish through Chalfont St Peter and into Chalfont Park and up to the Chilton Main Line. So thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe, comment, tell your friends about this area and about Henry's adventures. Thanks very much for watching and goodbye.